Have you heard of Magic Spoon cereal, the gluten-free, sugar-free, and apparently guilt-free cereal that comes in colorful boxes and is marketed to adults who are missing their favorite childhood cereals? So what is Magic Spoon cereal and does it earn the title of quote unquote healthy? Is it better than regular cereal? In this video, I will cover this and so much more as a registered dietitian with an intuitive eating focus. Now, if you've been a part of my community for any length of time, you might already know how I feel about guilt ever being part of your meal. And if you're not, if you're new here, hello, my name is Colleen. I am an intuitive eating registered dietitian and founder of The Society, a no food rules community for amazing humans, just like you gorgeous, who want real health and not another diet. If that sounds like it's up your alley, be sure to hit subscribe to this channel because you are going to fit right in here. So let's get into it. What are my thoughts on this cereal? What was my reaction when I first tasted it? I actually took a video so that you can literally see. I'll show that later in the video when we get to chatting about what it tastes like. Stick around for that. And is it worth it? With that, let's grab a spoon and dive in. What is Magic Spoon? Magic Spoon is a high protein, low carb cereal crafted by two cereal loving dudes. They wanted to continue eating cereal, but without the harsh sugar crash in the afternoon. Not being able to find the kind of cereal that they wanted, they decided to make their own. So what makes this Magic Spoon cereal different from other cereals on the market? Let's take a peek at the ingredients list. So what is Magic Spoon cereal even made of? What's in Magic Spoon cereal, you ask? Well, the first ingredient on the list is dairy. Magic Spoon is high in protein because it does have a high dairy content. Now, beyond the dairy, the ingredient list, it really isn't all that long. There are some different sweeteners in there, which we'll go over in more detail in a minute. There's some tapioca starch, some inulin, which is a type of fiber, and there's also some flavorings and salt. The rest of the ingredients vary by the different flavors. So for example, the peanut butter flavor of Magic Spoon cereal contains peanut flour, peanut oil, and peanut extract. Magic Spoon is gluten-free and soy-free. It isn't vegan though because of the dairy base that we mentioned. One very common ingredient question is, does Magic Spoon have artificial sweeteners. So Magic Spoon is sweetened with a few different types of sweeteners, including stevia and monk fruit. It is also sweetened with a kind of sugar called allulose, which you may have not heard of before. Now, these are called non-nutritive sweeteners because they don't provide a substantial amount of calories. So these kinds of sweeteners are, they can be really controversial. In my professional viewpoint, I really don't believe that they're quote unquote bad bad, they may help reduce spikes in blood sugar or prevent those sugar crashes. However, I don't recommend that you use them because you would feel guilt, stress, or anxiety from eating real regular sugar. That is going to signal a harmful food rule and not a preference for, let's say, a stable blood sugar. And that is likely going to backfire on you by way of a sugar binge. If you're not sure if your preference is a preference or a food rule, I do have a quiz that I will link for you guys that you can find out if you are actually just eating healthy or if you do have those harmful food rules. Spoiler, most people are a bit surprised by their results. So I'll link that in the description for you to take. Also, not everyone's tummies are gonna necessarily handle these artificial sweeteners the same. If yours gets upset by them, skip them. Now, all of this artificial sweetener talk is also considering that you're eating these in quote unquote normal amounts. You're not eating huge amounts of them on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're eating them here and there, typically they're going to be fine. Again, that's for most people. Always speak to a dietitian if you have specific concerns. But the low sugar levels in this cereal are part of the appeal for people who are on the keto train. So that begs the question, is Magic Spoon cereal keto friendly? Yes, Magic Spoon cereal is keto friendly, but I'm not a supporter of the keto diet for a variety of reasons. 
It's unnecessarily restrictive and it can be actually very harmful, especially if you have ever struggled with your relationship with food, like experiencing binge eating or food guilt or obsessive thoughts about food. Most of the keto studies are done on men and they have a very small sample size, which really isn't great for research. From my registered dietitian point of view, for the majority of people who don't have medical needs for a keto diet, say someone with epilepsy, I'm just not a keto fan and I would advise against it. But the facts are magic spoon cereal is low in net carbs. So let's dive into what that means. I just want to briefly touch on what a net carb is. Basically the FDA food and drug administration does not recognize or regulate the term net carbs. It kind of is just made up by food marketers and is used as they wish technically. So it's kind of like superfood, another term with no specific definition. Net carbs are likely a residual effect of the Atkins time of life where carbs were demonized and avoided like the plague repackaged as keto. So what is it? Basically a net carb is when you subtract the grams of fiber and sugar alcohols from the total grams of carbohydrates. This is because our bodies don't use fiber and sugar alcohols for energy, nor are they likely to impact our blood sugar much. But let's also not forget that we need carbs to survive and to thrive. Something that is low in carbs is not necessarily healthier, it's just different from something that might be higher in carbs. We need carbs, we need fat, and we need protein too. Fewer carbs does not equal better. So I recommend taking that phrase, low net carbs, honestly with a grain of salt. I would probably be more apt to say, okay, how much fiber does this have? Will this keep me full, you know, versus what, how many net carbs does this have? Or maybe I'd think about things like how many added sugars versus fiber are in there if I'm thinking of gentle nutrition, because I know that's gonna give me quick energy. So let's talk a little bit more about health. Is Magic Spoon cereal healthy? Here's the deal, sweet cheeks. I don't like to categorize any food as healthy or unhealthy. Food is just food, even cereal. And food is a tool to meet your needs. Your needs for taste desires, energy boost, filling the old tum-tum. There are a lot of good and valid reasons to eat and eat different foods. I'm a big analogy gal when I work with my clients, so let's throw one in here. Let's take a hammer, for example. This is a tool, right? just like food is to your body. But it, the context is what matters to determine its benefit or value. You can use a hammer to whack a nail into your wall and hang a picture, or you can use a hammer to break your neighbor's window open, right? Same tool, but one of the outcomes is far better than the other, right? Let's detach our reasons from what we should eat and stop looking at just the tool or the nutritional makeup of a food in this case and consider what what's in a box of Magic Spoon cereal, and if the context that it's being used for is something that serves you. So let's dive a little bit more into the nitty gritty of the nutritional aspects of Magic Spoon cereal. First up, let's talk about the protein. As we talked about a lot so far, Magic Spoon is pretty high in protein compared to other cereals. So one of their cereals contains about 13 to 14 grams of protein, depending on the flavor. And if you have a cereal with milk, Milk, that's gonna add a couple more grams of protein in there. Now, I really don't advocate for counting grams of protein. It's typically unnecessary and it can lead to a disordered relationship with food. However, knowing the nutritional information of a food is not bad, it's just data. I teach my clients in the society how to use nutrition information in a non-diety, non-obsessive way. For example, a cereal with protein may serve to keep you full and satisfied longer than a comparable bowl of cereal that might be just grain based. For example, one cup of let's say Cheerios has about five grams of protein. Cheerios aren't bad because they're lower in protein. I love them, but they're just different. However, it's worth reminding you that satisfaction is also part of the process. So we have to actually also think about, do you like that cereal, right? If not, that might actually take away from the ability of that food to keep you full and satisfied. Food is so much more than nutritional value. Now let's talk about fiber. I love fiber. It's a splendid nutrient. It comes from plants, helps to keep our digestion trucking along, and it also helps to keep us feeling full and satisfied longer. 
fabulous. It is possible to go overboard on fiber, but that is typically not the case with Magic Spoon. Each serving of Magic Spoon only has about one to two grams of fiber, which really isn't all that much. If you compare it to one cup of Cheerios that we talked about, the Cheerios is gonna win here. It's got about four grams of fiber. Now again, this information about the fiber content, it doesn't make either cereal better or worse. They're just different. And for reference, it's recommended to eat about 25 to 38 grams of fiber a day from a variety of grains, fruits, and vegetables to help support a healthy digestive system. Yet, according to the 2020 Dietary Guidelines for Americans, more than 90% of women and 95% of men do not meet the recommended needs for dietary fiber intake. So this fiber information, it may be helpful for you when making a food choice. And we also can't forget about fortification. So many breakfast cereals are fortified with essential nutrients such as iron and folic acid. Now, Magic Spoon is not. So if you're hoping to boost iron levels, because you're say anemic, this cereal probably won't help. Nor will it help those with pregnancy needs for folic acid. So actually, if micronutrients are a nutrition focus for you, you might be better off picking a plain old bowl of Fruity Loops. Again, I can't stress enough that this does not mean that Magic Spoon is bad or unhealthy. It's simply different, right? We are just going through what's in the box so you can decide if it deserves a place in your cereal bowl or in your lap while you're watching your favorite TV show. I love munching on dry cereal. Okay, so now perhaps for the most important question. How does it taste? Of course, if I am going to give you a review about food, I'm gonna wanna give it a try, right? Now, Magic Spoon, it comes in a several flavors that are very reminiscent of our childhood faves, such as cocoa, fruity, peanut butter, frosted maple waffle, cinnamon roll, blueberry, chocolate chip cookie, and s'mores. So my favorite cereals when I was a kid were Frosted Flakes and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Mm. What were yours? I have to know. I feel like this is such a personal question. People feel very passionate about it. So be sure to sound off in the comments. I wanna hear from you. Ooh, you know what was another good one? Apple Jacks. So I got a few different flavors of Magic Spoon and I tried them. So I did a whole real time taste test for you so you could actually see my initial thoughts. This was my first time ever pouring a bowl of this stuff and I wanted to be able for you to actually see my honest thoughts in the moment because that matters so much and taste matters so much. So roll the clip. All right guys, so I'm gonna try Magic Spoon cereal for the first time. So I have the one, the cocoa and the fruity here. I'm gonna try them dry and then I'm gonna add milk and we'll see. Actually, these are the way that I have the bowls right here. So I have these bowls right here. So let's try it. Let's try the fruity first. Okay, hold our thoughts. So first thoughts, this is not the same as a fruit loop, right? It's reminiscent. It's not bad. It's not bad. I can taste hints of it. The flavor's not as strong. There's also something about the texture that's different. I do, I, the flavor notes, I guess you could say, like I do see similarities. The cocoa, they're both definitely way less sweet. Again, I don't love this one that much, you guys. The textures are definitely different. I don't know how to describe them. Not as crunchy, I think might be a good way to describe it. Okay, I'm gonna grab some milk and I wanna taste it with milk. Note to self, buy more milk. Oh, we should probably get a spoon, huh? That might be helpful. Spoon acquired. Okay, let's go with, we'll go, we start with the fruity, we'll go for fruity first. Mm. Pretty much the same thing. They're not bad, you guys. I think they're good. I do notice a little bit of an artificial sweetener aftertaste. It's not super duper strong, but I feel like the more that it sits in my mouth, the more I can taste it a little bit. So. If you're really sensitive to that, you're probably may not like these. Okay, let's try the cocoa. It's a very faint chocolate flavor. I like this one better with milk than I did on the own. I do think that, not that the flavors are more subtle, they taste more similar to the cereals when they're with milk. Okay, 
thoughts. They're not bad. I don't think they're gross at all. I can see why people eat them, but they're not exactly the same as your favorite childhood cereals. Like absolutely not. The flavors are much less prominent, much less prominent. You know what I mean? They're not as kind of in your face. And I do notice, like I said, I can taste a little bit of the artificial sweetener the further away it gets. Personally, like I don't think that's, that's not a turn off for me, but if you are sensitive to that, you might not like it. I would eat them, especially with a little bit of gentle nutrition. I'm probably gonna full bowl and eat them. Yeah, I like them guys. But let's be honest. When I want a bowl of Fruit Loops or some Cocoa Pebbles, I'm gonna eat Fruit Loops or Cocoa Pebbles. Cause like I said, these are, they're not bad, but they're not the exact same. If I'm craving the real deal, I'm gonna have the real deal. But again, a little bit of gentle nutrition and I dig that. I just brought these to my husband upstairs for him to try too. And he gave a really good way of putting it. He says, they taste like the cereals, but they're ran under water a little bit. Sounds funny, but they're, they're just like kind of diluted in the flavors. So he couldn't notice a artificial sweetener taste as much as I did. Like I said, it's not something where I'm like, ah, oh, I taste. But if you're sensitive to that, just be aware. But I thought I'd share that because I thought that was a pretty good way of putting it, especially for this one. It just feels like it's been run underwater. Again, if you want a less sweet, less prominent taste, might be good for you, but not the same. Do I think it tastes exactly the same as my favorite childhood cereals? Not exactly. And for me, is it worth the price per box? <sighs> Probably not but it might be for you. So let's cover the cost as compared to traditional cereals, as well as who might be excited to have the cereal in their kitchen. So how much does Magic Spoon cost? It ain't cheap. A box of Magic Spoon cereal, which has about seven ounces in it, is going to run you about 10 bucks. Now compare that to a 12 ounce box of Fruit Loops from the grocery store, then that's less than $4. And if you get the Aldi brand where I shop at, the Fruit Rounds, it's about $2. Now in general, it is common for gluten-free products, which Magic Spoon is, to cost more than their gluten-containing counterparts. So for example, a 12 ounce box of gluten-free Honey Nut Cheerios costs about $5, and a 10 ounce box of gluten-free Cascadian Farms or organic berry vanilla puff cereal costs about $4.50. So gluten-free tends to be a little bit higher. Now I'm a budget conscious gal, which is why I love Aldi so much. There I can get a box of store brand Cheerios for about $1.50. Now who should try Magic Spoon? We've done all of this talking. I'm not going to say that Magic Spoon is well magical, but it may be a fit for some of you. So let's explore that a little bit. Anyone is absolutely welcome to try the cereal to see if they actually like it. Don't make a rule out of what you can and cannot buy. So for example, if you're thinking, it says guilt-free, I can't buy it, that's diet culture, that's still letting diet culture control your food choices. Someone managing their carbohydrates for a, let's say, health reason, not a diet culture reason, might enjoy that this cereal helps to keep their blood sugar in line thanks to the protein boost and the lessened sugar content. Now, this might include, let's say, women with gestational diabetes who need to keep their carbs maybe lower, especially in the morning. Totally individualized, just one scenario. It may also be a good fit for someone with type one or type two diabetes. If you need to keep your total carbs per meal a little bit lower for those reasons, Magic Spoon might offer you a more satisfying portion than trying to do a low carb portion of a regular cereal. Of course, this absolutely depends on also if you like the cereal. If you'd feel guilt, stress, or anxiety around the regular childhood cereals, I really wouldn't recommend having this option. Rather, I would recommend working on making peace with those childhood cereals and breaking those food rules. We talk about that a lot here on this channel. Let's talk a little bit more about gentle nutrition. So if you are a regular around here, you know I love gentle nutrition, which is essentially a non-diety, non-obsessive, shame-free way of going about nutrition. Now, gentle nutrition honors the fact that our bodies do, in fact, need vitamins, minerals, protein, and fiber, for example. We just don't need to sacrifice our enjoyment of eating in order to meet those needs 
or obsess about it. Eating can and should be fun, you guys. One of the myths about not dieting and instead practicing intuitive eating, which I teach and preach here on this channel, is that it's just the eat anything diet and nutrition has no place. That's absolutely false. I am a registered dietitian after all, right? Gentle nutrition is one of the 10 principles of intuitive eating. And here is how you might apply gentle nutrition around your breakfast. So if you find that a regular bowl of non-magic, would that be like muggle cereal in Harry Potter terms? If you find that cereal leaves you feeling hungry really quickly, you might want to enjoy your cereal with something that is higher in protein, such as nuts or eggs, or maybe you treat that cereal as a snack and look for something more satisfying for breakfast, such as smoothie cereal. I have a recipe for that as well as protein pancakes. I'll put those recipes in the description for you if you wanna try them. Or maybe you try Magic Spoon cereal because you like how it tastes, the price, if it fits into your grocery budget, and if it leaves you feeling satisfied after breakfast. So maybe you add Magic Spoon to your cart. That's the cool thing about intuitive eating is there is no perfect answer for everyone, just the best fit for you. So here are the key takeaways of the question, is Magic Spoon cereal magical? Is it a good fit for you? Maybe. It isn't better or healthier than regular cereals, but it might serve a gentle nutrition purpose for you to help you feel full longer and to maybe manage your blood sugars. It might also be a nice option if you need to follow a gluten-free eating plan. Who should maybe skip this? probably anyone with a tight grocery budget or listen closely, anyone with food rules. Magic Spoon isn't for you if you're eating it because you quote unquote think you should. Could that be you? Think about it. The key is to know if you are really just eating healthy or if you actually have harmful food rules that need to be broken because they're gonna backfire. You can take the quiz that I have linked in the description to see if you really are in fact just innocently eating healthy or if you got those food rules. If you think that you don't, I hate to say it, but I bet you're wrong because most people actually do have food rules. So take that quiz, you'll find out what they are so that you can start getting back to living your healthiest and happiest life. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like and leave a comment letting me know. Also, be sure that you are subscribed to this channel and hit that little bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded because I want to help you accelerate your no food rules, non-diet, intuitive eating journey. And that is exactly what we do here on this channel. So with that, I will see you guys in the next video.